Welcome, everyone, to a very special episode of the HR and Payroll 2.0 podcast. I'm Pete Tiliakis, and as always, I'm joined by the legendary Julie Fernandez. Welcome, Julie. Thanks, Pete. We say we're in a very special episode because we are actually in a place we are usually not on yes. the Workday podcast bus. That's right. We are on the Forever Forward, uh, Workday Forever Forward bus. We are here with Christina Gold close partner of mine that we work with very, very uh, closely. And I love having conversations with and I'm excited to have her on the show. She is the general manager of workforce and payroll. Uh, we were just saying two very, very difficult and complex <laughs> things for the Workday organization. So welcome, Christina. Yeah, no, happy to be here and, and happy we could do this on the Forever Forward yes. bus. The rock yeah. star bus. The rock star bus. <laughs> yes, this yes. So this, awesome. This would be the big uh, RV tour bus that you see Workday bringing to its client events mm -hmm. and other events. And uh, I, to say that it is state of the art would be an understatement. This is probably the nicest possible podcast studio we have ever uh, ever set foot in. So for thank sure. you so much for the hospitality. Yeah, this is such you. a privilege. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, excited to have you here, Christina. And um, I know I had a burning question just even about your title. It is the stickiest of stuff in Workday, yeah. but also I was it, I found it very interesting that workforce management comes before payroll in your title, and I wanted to ask you about that. Why so, is that? So yes, it, it, it does, and, and you're right, Julie, this is the stickiest stuff. I like to say it is all the foundational pieces of Workday, so uh, I feel very privileged, but also a huge responsibility, yeah. right, in terms of making sure that yeah. all of this works and works well. And so the reason it's workforce and, and payroll is when we think about workforce and workforce management overall, um, core HR, HCM, is very important, and that is the foundation. And so you got to have that first, and so that's why workforce comes before payroll. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but but in that context, then workforce management do, isn't meant to mean time, right? It's More. meant to mean really all of workforce. It's really management. meant to mean to yeah. mean all. Of, you're exactly right. Yeah. So it means uh, core HCM. It means time absence. It means yep. total rewards. Um, actually, HR service delivery fits in there um, as well. So it, we've kind of uh, put a lot of things in that one basket. Look at that. <laughs> we got the mech mommy of payroll. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I've yeah. never been called that before. So. <laughs> yes, yes. No. Trying to make it memorable for you. <laughs> all right. I will yeah. not forget that. <laughs> I, so I, you, you, you make a great point about the foundational element of all that, right? Like I, I always say, I like to use a sports analogy. It's like football. It's the blocking and tackling that has to happen mm -hmm. to set up the touchdowns. Um, and I think that there is still a tremendous opportunity for us to do a lot of work in that space to make that easier and better and more uh, I, effective. I, I so, could not agree more. Yeah. We yeah. can't keep our eye. I like to say, again, sports analogy, you can't take your eye off that foundational ball because right. – you're never going to set up these other great things. And that's, that's what I want to dig into. With well, you ultimately you have to get to, you know, because they are the foundational elements, you have yeah. to get to foundational excellence. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's yeah. really our vision and what we strive for. Yeah. Yeah. So Julie, you want to do the honors and ask her the yes, question we I ask all of our honors. guests? So all right. Ooh. We yeah. always <laughs> ask our guests, how did you get started in HR? And mm -hmm. I, it, that can mean HR technology yep. here, right? And why do you stay? So uh, I started my career in HR technology, and uh, when uh, I graduated from college, I went to work for Accenture as a consultant, mm -hmm. and I worked on a payroll implementation. Oh, my. <laughs> you were green, by, you? By fire. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> so uh, that's sort of how I started, and then, then I ended up, at, you know, going to PeopleSoft, and then here I am at yeah. Workday. Wow. And That's awesome. I didn't even anticipate that we would hear you started in payroll of all places, because usually right. that's the question we're asking our guests is, why? Did, how did you fall into payroll? Yeah. Yes. But you actually did start I didn't in payroll. I did actually start in payroll. Interesting. Rolled your way up to and, other and things. All, all. It never lets you leave. It, it never lets you leave. Apparently, you just can't leave the family. Yeah, it does, stick, <laughs> it does stick to you. But thankfully, that we always say this, like, thankfully... Those that do come, they stay. And we, what we've got to do, and this is a whole other episode, we've got to work on getting more people to start their careers there or want to start yeah. their careers there. Yeah. Because yeah. we've got some real special athletes, as I like to say, out there in the space, but they're not necessarily been empowered the right way. And they haven't been, you know, they haven't been seen as rock stars. Yeah, and I, love I, I that. think that's that's entirely true. And, yeah. and I, I definitely feel that we're at a point in time where that whole function is transforming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I hope that that people who listen to our podcast start to hear all the different places that you can go, you know, when you start right? in payroll. How many towers of Thinking HR like Dr. There? Seuss. Oh, the places you'll go. Oh, the go. places you'll go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. look, you could end yeah. up on the workday bus. Yeah. You, you could. Yeah. And you asked me why I stay because so much changes like yeah. there's been when yeah. we think about technology how much has changed over over time um you know I, I feel like you know one of the things I I always stay because I learn and mm -hmm. I feel like I 
continually learn more and more. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a big hook for me too. Uh, you know, it's not static at all. Yeah. The target keeps it's moving. It's so yeah. dynamic and, uh, and yeah. that makes it fun I for those it. of us who are crazy. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so look, obviously we are, we're here live at the HR technology conference, uh, probably the biggest conference in HR technology, um, broadly for the industry. But, uh, I know, I know you've been here before, Christine, I know it's not your first rodeo, but what, what are you hearing? What are you, what are you seeing? What's, what's got you excited? What do you got? What's has you buzzing? This week? Yeah. You know, I think, uh, you know, one of the most exciting things is, you know, no surprise, AI. Uh, and not just that we're talking about AI because we've been talking about it for a little bit, yeah. but I feel like that we're making that move from talking about it to how we're actually going to use it, yeah. you know, and that it's becoming more real. Um, and I, I think just seeing that yeah. is uh, is what's exciting to me. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, right? It's yeah. like, it's so refreshing. I, I was telling someone on stage, I was like, had I had this as an HR leader, you know, 15 years ago mm-hmm. or whatever, I could have taken over the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? With just any of this. So it, I mean, it, cha- it is changing the way we work. It is changing the way HR works. Yeah. yeah. Right. And and how uh, HR serves the business, really, I think is, yeah. uh, like you said, yeah. taken over the world. Yeah. I, I love the way that it's a, it's a topic starter, right? Mm-hmm. But really where it becomes most interesting to people is when you embed it into the client stories or the use cases. And so, you know, it's, it's just a thing. It's a, to, it's a tool. It has a potential mm-hmm. to just be that hyped, hyped conversation of the year, right? Yeah. Until you start to see it working its way into things that are processes that are happening all the time. Yeah. And you realize like, oh, this is integral really to what we're delivering. Uh, absolutely. Right. I think it's the, the, the term has been, you know, bandied about where you hear us talking about agentifying ad- mm-hmm. and that yeah. really is what it is, right? It is about the process and yeah. how you're solving the problem. Uh, with yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. You should almost not recognize it. Right. When it's being, well, exactly. Right. right. It should be just part of yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting. Someone a little while ago, a leader said to me something about, um, uh, about I can't remember how they said it, something about how organizations need to start looking at their human capital as an, an appreciating asset that mm-hmm. actually gets more valuable over time. Right. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. But that's a really good point, right? With, with, with you know, skills, obviously, and, and, and opportunities for employees to learn different things and make contributions. I don't know that every every CHRO yeah. or, or, or excuse me, every business leader it necessarily knows that. I think the CHRO knows that. Yeah. But like, what are your thoughts on that? Comment? Well, I think, you know, traditionally, you know, businesses have looked at their customers and think about customer lifetime yeah. value. Yeah. But you really do need to look at your employee lifetime value. Right. You know, where how does that actually help uh, help the business and, and growth? And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I do think uh, it is looking at them as as assets. Yep. Um, but you know, but it's so much more than that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think everybody's just afraid to say that because, yeah. because yeah. it's sort of like, oh, then I'm just making it uh, about dollars and cents, but I'm talking about people here. People, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like just like um, there's an expectation of technology that you're constantly upgrading and enhancing and bringing out new things, there should be an equivalent expectation of our talent that is constantly upskilling and, and shifting and agile. becoming more yeah. agile yeah. and more useful um, and they're learning more and more and higher level things because the technology, the onus is shifting to the technology. I mean, you make a good point there with skills, right? Mm-hmm. It is really about yeah, when you think about the uh, the value to the business and looking at assets. It's what's the what's the combination of skills that they've that we've accumulated yeah. over time, right? right? Because that's the that's the value that you've added. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I've always kind of wondered that, like even before all this skills talk, I think about times in my career, like in consulting and other things, where it was like. I knew there were things going on, but I was like, did anybody know that I ha- I've done that before? Like no one asked me or, or asked my, yeah. or did they know Julie did that? Yeah. Like, and, and now I feel like there's, you know, I know you guys are doing a lot of great work and there's great point solutions that are helping companies sort of draw that out and understand what they have and what they don't have mm-hmm. and what they, what the, what they need, I think right. is probably still the, the conundrum. Yeah. Um, it's but, supply and demand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I mean, I just think that there, there's such a you can have such a better awareness of what your workforce is and isn't now than ever before, but I don't know that everybody's really taking advantage of that. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah. You know, I think uh, um, people are maybe trying to get there. Yeah. Some of them maybe don't exactly know where to start, and yeah. you know, I think it is the um, yeah, the, having that knowledge really does allow you to use things in more yeah. strategic and different ways. Yeah, yeah. And while I think um, it's natural for folks to want to. Think about and explore kind of the bling of a standalone new thing, yep. you know, that does something very niche and something very useful. Where they're really going to adopt and pick up is when they find it embedded in the foundations 
of what they're using already uh, because, you know, it just it just becomes a part of what you're doing and you yeah. don't have to go searching and you don't have to you don't have to go finding that next cool thing and make a business case and yeah. do something very one off. Well, what it right? does. And, you know, I mean, I could not agree more is that, you know, it, it <clears throat> provides the context around what you're doing. Um, yeah. And when you think about your data and data being the thing that fuels, you know, giving you the information the, that you need for decision making, et cetera, fueling AI to help with the process to make it better, solve the problem. Yeah. It's yeah, it is has to be embedded yeah. and within context so that you really are able to get something out of it. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, look, there, there's a lot of optimism for what AI is going to do, the augmentation. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's and I want to get on this in a minute, but. I think it's going to be a blessing really to that frontline leader. And I know that's somewhere that you guys are really focused. Yeah. You've leaned in a lot to that because mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I know we've all been a manager at some point, you know, in our careers. Hopefully you get that opportunity if you haven't. Um, and it's scary, right? Because you're like, oh, wow, I know the most about the thing that I do, but yeah. but I don't know if I'm really ready, you know, and, and having that information and help because... I mean, so much of the engagement and the coaching and the, the, the pulse of the worker is now on the manager at the front line, right? They know better than anyone what's really going on. Um, but talk about that a little bit, what that means, you know, for you guys and, and the way that, I, that you see CHROs kind of looking at that, that group of the, of the population now, the backbone of the, yeah. of the leadership. You right? know, you think about um, our frontline managers and, and yeah. people leaders, managers We're in, gen asking a lot, in general. You know? Yes, they're kind yeah. of at the nexus of all the change that's been happening. And we've yeah. asked a lot more and more mm -hmm. of them to, to deal with, you know, uh, safety and health is a thing that they've mm -hmm. now had to deal with that they didn't have to do, deal with before. Mental health being another thing that they need to think about with their yeah. teams, right? Like, yeah. so, so all, of the, all of the people things and then productivity, yeah. like how yeah. do they optimize for the business? How do they keep people on the floor? How do right. they make sure they have the right people coming in and people aren't working overtime, yeah. right? People aren't getting burnt out, right? Like they're, they're actually managing all of that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where we are asked, as you said, we're asking so much of them you know, how do we give them the right tools so that they don't have to worry about some things? Yeah. Meaning, you know, uh, people can, sh you know, swap shifts yeah. easily yeah. without yeah. them having to get involved in every last thing. You know, being able to communicate out to their their people if they're they haven't shown up or haven't checked yeah. in, right? Like, like those things to help them do their job better and for them not to have to leave where they are to, to right. meet them where they are. So it has to be yeah. mobile. They're deskless, right? So how do you how do you provide that yeah. in a in a manner that um, is easy for them, giving them the right tools so they feel also invested in um, to be able to do their jobs yeah. well. Yeah. I'm hearing a lot of like like employees really want to be heard, right? And and empowered and mm -hmm. engaged, right? And and it's not just it sounds anecdotal, like, oh engagement. Right. But like I think people want to be I think I think people workers really want to know that you understand their needs right. and you're also working to help them meet meet their goals. And I think that that's, I don't know that that's something that a lot of organizations see as a responsibility of the employer, but I believe that they, they do in some ways because work is so much a part of these people's lives, all, all of our lives. Um, so yeah, it worries me that we might be missing that in some ways for some organizations. Yeah, no. And I think, it, you know, particularly as, as we're talking about the frontline workforce, mm -hmm. I think, you know, they've sort of been underserved in terms of tools and, and you yeah. know, like feeling like they're heard. So, you know, we feel that, you know, you want to get feedback, you want to understand the sentiment, but you want to actually show how you're doing something based on that, yeah. like, that, right, you know, right. you hear it and how do you like come back to them and let yeah. them know that we, we hear you. And we know that when employers invest in tools such as, you know, tools for engagement, um, you know, what that does is it improves profitability and improves productivity. Yeah. So it does affect the, so to your point, like, yeah, it might sound fluffy, like, oh, it's about engagement, but it actually has a direct effect yeah. on productivity for the business. Totally. So are there special tools or techniques that you've used to kind of put that laser focus on the frontline worker as you're thinking about, you know, making that making experience better, embedding AI and other things like how do you how do you reach them? Early focus is always on the salaried workers because they're kind of easy. Before we move on, I need to let you know about my friend Mark Pfeffer and his show People Tech. If you're looking for the latest on product development, marketing, funding, big deals happening in talent acquisition, HR, HCM, that's the show you need to listen to. Go to the Work to Find Network, search up People Tech, Mark Pfeffer, you can find them anywhere. But they're they're e they're definitely easier. Yeah. They're they're um it's funny, uh it, it's sort of a a a um balance between they are seem simpler 
but there's also complexity. Like how do you how do you um, come to the the balance of that? And so uh, techniques that we use, I, I think definitely we look at making sure that we are looking at the persona mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and making sure that you know we're looking at what's the job to be done. You know, because at the end of the day, what are you trying to do to help them? Like, are you are you trying to help them get through it faster? Right. Are you trying to help them just, you know, yeah. uh, you know, what is it that they are trying to get done? Mm-hmm. And we were very focused on that job and then figure out, like, what is what where should it be? Yeah. And where do we meet them? Because that's where they're going to be. Where do they need the information? How do we communicate to them? You know, what do we need to give them so that, uh, you know, in many cases, like they get in and get out. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean. The, the process of HR and, and that work, how much time do they really need to spend in there? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And that's where I think the tech and the data and the information can help them yes. figure that it, out. Yes. It definitely the speeds decisions. up the, yeah. the, the process. Yeah, yeah. And also just the process design and optimization mm-hmm. because so often when, uh, when folks are deploying a technology, they think about the job the way the jobs have always been defined. Right. And they don't think about job architecture and they don't think about work structures and they don't think about the things that drive. Back to the foundation. Exactly <laughs> the foundations you're trying to, right. you know, build and deploy. So they they have these visions of doing things the way things should be done. But foundationally, yeah. they're not set up. You know, and, they haven't and thought you, about it. You have to have yeah. the framework. You have to think about yeah. it and, and make sure that you're connecting the, the things you really need to be able to, like, you know, are your skills connected to your job that's right, right? That's and right. then how does that fit into what your structures yeah. look like even and then as basic how do as, I deploy work even as basic as viewing data right and what yeah. you should be able to view and what you shouldn't there are a yeah. number of ways to make people view data but if you don't do it in a way that's foundationally sound yeah you may have to redo it later to really leverage the tools the yeah. best no yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So, so Christina, you're, you're obviously on the front lines uh, as Julie is out there helping companies transform, and and you're 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 building. You're really, in some ways, I feel like Workday and, and their peers are really sort of shaping what the future should be for work. Mm-hmm. What what's the lens right now of the CHRO heading into 2025? I mean, what do you what do you hear? You just came from Rising, and yeah. you're here. Like, what are yeah. you hearing? What do you what's the what's the pulse? Yeah, I think you know for for CHROs, uh, you know, their world has definitely gotten more complex, yeah. right? And and I think it's it's very much. Uh, um, they really need to operate much more cross-functionally yeah. where it isn't just like, well, I'm responsible for the people stuff and the development stuff, you know, where now, you know, they're, they're really um, connected to the CIO, yeah. right? Because technology is so important in terms mm-hmm. of, of, uh, of how it works. And then to the CFO, right? Because it, at the end of the day, it's their responsibility to bring in the talent to drive the business. Right. And that gets harder and harder, yeah. you know, to, there are, you know, talent shortages and, and finding people to do, to do jobs. Like how do we, you know, how do we attract people and how do then we retain them? Right. And that's a, um, it's a team sport, right? Yeah. Everybody yeah. needs to be part of that. And so for CHROs, I think there's that. I think the, the skills conversation is also a big one. Um, you yeah. know, when you think about having the right talent to do what you need to get done, you know, thinking about it from a skills uh, uh, landscape is, is super important. And so talent practices are changing yeah. uh, to, to be more skill based. And, and I think that's the, you know, making sure you have the right talent with the right skills yeah. at the right time. Yeah. So, so it's it is skill based planning. <laughs> I'd love to have you check me a little bit on this, but I feel like CHR conversations for years have always been inclined to focus on learning and talent. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's often more um, senior teams or salary teams and some of the some of the folks that are coming up the pipeline and up the ranks. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I feel like I'm seeing more of a move in the CHROs to acknowledge the foundational and think about all of these things from a broader base perspective. Are you feeling that too? I'm def- definitely seeing that as well. And, you know, when I talk about kind of cross-functionally, I mentioned the CIO and the CFO. Mm-hmm. There's also the COO who, you know, is yeah. very linked with the CHRO in terms of of uh, making sure that your operations are as efficient as possible. Yeah. You know, companies are looking to like, how do I drive business growth? But it is also like, how do I make sure I'm managing margins, right? And so right. how do I optimize yeah. uh, from that perspective? And so there is the, if your foundation isn't isn't right, then you can't actually apply AI in ways to actually gain efficiency. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, along that lines, last week, um, one of your customers uh, said on stage something that I hadn't really I thought about, I, I knew it, but I didn't, it's like, you need someone to say it to you. And I thought he said it really eloquently. He said, you know, HR, and I think he said in their organizations or, or really all of HR needs to be thinking like you're a business leader who happens to sit in HR, but yeah. has HR really sort of stepped up to that realization? I don't know that they have, because I don't know that that's the way we were treated as practitioners coming up. 
it wasn't, you weren't business leaders, you were process owners and, you know, but now that, that's so true though. You, you really yeah. are business leaders and you have a real responsibility. I mean, the ultimate, you know, uh, asset that, that yeah. is going to power the company forward, you know, technology aside, we're going to need humans and, 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 and in emotional intelligence to, to, to achieve any sort of transformation of any kind. But do you think HR really has realized that or even leaned into it yet? Because I well, don't think they have. Well, you know, as, as you mentioned, right, your people yeah. cost is your biggest, is your largest yeah. cost. So mm-hmm. as an HR leader, you're responsible, really, for yeah. managing that and, and driving that. And uh, I do think that HR is has been transforming over over time or maybe transforming isn't the right word evolving is probably a better a better word you know where you know i I think you know traditionally it was like well that's finance's job yeah you know but now they're just as um uh you know I, i would say as sharp or um spend time with data yeah you know i think the um understanding how to put data to use um i i see that evolving and that that's a you know back to the skills conversation mm-hmm. a skill set that we're making sure that that we're seeing more and more um of an appetite for yeah. uh, in hr they're realizing that to your point they're a business leader who happens to sit in hr yeah so right? uh, you need to understand yeah. your business and your business is your people but it is all the aspects of that and it isn't you know growth just growth and development right right, right? like that's important because then you're building skills which then allow you to do other things yeah. but it is it is the like okay do i have what i need how do i how do i manage that right right yeah I, to I, the I, most effectiveness too right? right to the best outcomes and then i think the other piece too yeah. that that is important for is that you know in hr sits a lot of the compliance and regulatory things that they have to manage and so that's a, that's another piece of the business that i think you know you have to get better yeah. you need the the data and you have to have more maybe business acumen to to yeah. uh, to manage. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if HR doesn't organizationally limit itself because you know we're very familiar with the idea that you have a business partner for mm-hmm. HR mm-hmm. and and already you're you're slotting yourself into a different into a a, a different part of the organization, somewhat limited yeah. and viewing yourself, you know, as HR as something, you know, a little bit more niche than having that big responsibility as uh as you were describing. So maybe organizationally, there's some things to think about that might yeah. possibly impact the culture or the way that we approach. I, you know, I think it is HR. a bit of a mindset, yeah. you know, and, and I think you're right. It's like, how do we, hey, you should have a little more swag. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't be elevated if you don't elevate yourself yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to see the HR practitioners and payroll practitioners really display their skill because they, yeah. they have rich skills. Yeah. They're incredibly adaptive human beings. They have gone through, uh, the hardest of things uh, for organizations with the limited limited tools to do so. And now it's all here. But what I worry about is, is HR has always been slow uh, at adopting. Mm-hmm. And now the innovation is coming so aggressively fast. It, it is coming really, really fast. It's almost really head spinning. Fast, yeah. how, how, like, how do we reconcile that? How do yeah. we, what, what are your thoughts on that? Just how do we get everybody in the, you know, on a modern solution and, and, and really in that opportunity right. space? Right. I think, first of all, you need a strategy, right? Yeah. Like you need to understand like what, like how am I? How are my, Are we going to approach it? Why are we doing this? Yeah, yeah. You know, because I, I think everybody needs to be bought into the why rather than you know we talk about skills conversations. But why are you? Why do you need to be a skill based uh, you know yeah. organization? So I think you know I think that's the the first piece. Um, and then I think there's the kind of a like how do we shift the mindset? You know, how do we get people to to yeah. sort of understand uh, where we are? Then there's a you know, an operational readiness that needs to happen. Like, you know, where are you from a data standpoint? Like, are you, are you ready to, to take this on or what, what do you need to do to get that Mm -hmm. in order? Uh, And then from an operational readiness, like what frameworks do we have in place to, to make this work? So it's a multi-step process really to get people in there, but you're absolutely right. It is moving so fast. Yeah. Um, it's head spinning. It is head spinning, but I think this is also an opportunity for organizations to make sure they're really taking advantage of their partners, yep. you know, the, the people who help them. So like Workday, you know, they take advantage of what we know, yep. the customers right. that we've worked with, you know, because I think there's a lot of questions too, when we think about AI, you know, ethical and responsible mm-hmm. AI, there are concerns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you need to make sure you're working with a trusted partner who, 
will help guide you in in those aspects and also share what what we've seen that works and doesn't work so that we can take on like you don't have to do everything on, on right, your own right, right? Yeah. take advantage of the expertise that's out there and that includes the risk too right, right. i think that's some of the attraction yeah. of having things embedded and part of the foundation yeah. is there's some innate risk mm-hmm. there and you're looking for your partners to, you know, step up to the plate in the areas of risk that are, yeah. correspond to them so right. that you can manage the other areas of risk, Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's a beautiful, you brought up a beautiful point here to kind of round things out, and that's AI, right? Like, uh-huh. obviously, it's the buzz. Yes. Um, you guys put out some some amazing stuff. We're going to break down on our show soon with uh, Workday Illuminate. Uh-huh. Um, very cool. I thought you guys were very transparent. And you always have been really incredibly transparent. <laughs> yeah, you have to be, right? You have right. to be. Yeah. Um, I love Especially that. Especially when we're talking AI. Yeah. Yes. Right? yeah. There's so it's much... all about setting the bar. Yes. I know. <laughs> but what, what would be, say, your advice to those that are out there kind of like starting the path, right? I mean, there, like I said, a lot of cautious optimism, a lot mm-hmm. of opportunity. Yeah. But where do we start? Like I've seen a lot of companies. I've interviewed, you know, firms that are the bigger firms, obviously, that are already maybe using it in their customer or their product experience, mm-hmm. but not maybe not necessarily yet in the back office. And that's probably next for them, which would be great because they have had some learnings. They yeah. failed and, and tried and, yeah. you know, and done some things. Um, but what would be your advice to leaders that maybe are a little, we like to call them paralyzed, you know, with what to do? Yeah. Like, do you need an AI roadmap? Um, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, there's a, a it, it, it's hard to know where to start, yeah. right? And I think that's sort of the, uh, I, I would say you have to figure out how to get started because yeah. it is moving so fast that if you just like, you can't wait for it to be like, let's see how this thing goes, right? Yeah. Because you will be left behind. And so I think it is the, you know, make a plan to figure out like, how do we get started? But it does have to be rooted in a strategy, yeah. right? And in, into like, what are the biggest things that we're trying to solve and start there, yeah. you know? And why. Um, I and think the why The is why really too. matters. Yeah. And is. the why matters yeah. not just for how you're going to get it done, yeah. but it matters from a cultural readiness too. Mm-hmm. Like your organization, yep. like where are they? Like are, are they ready to do this or not? And it is a mindset. You you have to like be willing to, you know, do things and do things quickly and experiment and fail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yep. then, and then try again. But, you know, I, I think the back to, you know, Make sure you you uh, you work on your core competency yeah. and you take advantage of the others yeah. yes. uh, to 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 uh, to get that right. Yeah, and in the end, AI is a tool, right? It's a exactly. tool in the tool set. Yeah, and you know you can obtain that tool or tap into that tool yourself directly or via partners or you know yeah. like many many different ways. So um, some of the things that we've done with practitioners have absolutely said. Figure out what it is you're trying to achieve first, exactly as you said, yeah. Christina. And then, you know, let's look at and explore what, how you can get And to then that. there's maybe one other thing I would add to the, mm-hmm. the cultural readiness is you need to make sure your partner has kind of the same values as that you do, right? That, That's that a great you, point. There's, there's trust, mm-hmm. you know, where I think um, it's particularly as we think about the fear and risk around AI, uh, responsible and ethical AI is absolutely critical. And so mm-hmm. making sure that you are comfortable with that. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Are, are, your clients, are your clients looking to you for that sort of guidance on how to be successful with AI? Are you, or how, how is that relationship going as buyers are out there, you know, having questions and saying, hey, what do we, you know, what does this mean for us in our industry? So they are, I yeah. would say our customers are at different ends of the spectrum, right? Yeah. right? right. Where we, I mean, it's like almost every company is a technology company today, whether, be, right? whether or yeah. not they're in, you know, financial services or manufacturing yeah. or whatever it is, it's right? They, they, they definitely healthcare, they, they definitely are more technology type companies. So, so we do hear a lot for, you know, like they're, as you said, they're using AI in other parts of their business. And now they're trying to figure out where does this fit, but they're also trying to plan for if Workday is going to do it, you know, they want to know what we're doing and where we're right, going right, because right. then maybe they'll just wait for us to do these, these sorts of things. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like any so they're other looking you to lead them in a yes, lot of ways yes. in that way. So yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a huge responsibility. It is. You're shaping the future it, of work. That's yeah, you're back to the it, beginning. It, you it know? is, it is a big responsibility. Yeah, Super fun. Yeah. yeah. And of course, I mean, like you want to, you want to compliment. No pressure. <laughs> Compliment and supplement each other. Let's not have a lot of overlaps, right? Hey, my team can, can yeah. build a killer payroll. So I'm like, we, yes. we, we can do anything. We can do it. We can yes, do it. Yes, you guys have, you have a great team. You have a great team. So look, I want to round this out. We are at HR Tech Conference. This, this has been fantastic, Christine. I could just go on and on. I know. I, I think we could talk for hours. I know. I know. I'm going to round this out. They won't with like, let us. They're going to kick us I know, out. I know. Yeah. <laughs> with maybe, maybe a light prognostication. So one of the things that we our, our audience really loves, every year we do a where uh, HR should focus for 2020, whatever. Mm-hmm. This is 2025 or heck coming up on 
if you had advice for for CHROs out there, where would you say you, you're going to want to focus intently in 2025? Um, well, I mean, AI seems like a big, big bucket, right, right? right? But I think, you know, AI from a standpoint of, you know, how does it help you to become kind of a destination workplace? So yep. you're attracting the right talent. Um, how does it help you to have more agile and fluid talent? So you have the right talent in the right place, internal mobility, using yeah. conti- the contingent work, like what's the right Yes, you know, yeah, workers. That, so it's like a total, total talent uh, strategy. Uh, and then you really, how does it help drive your bottom line? Yeah. You know, cause we, everybody gets, is going to be held accountable uh, mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. that. So I would say, you know, how do they think about using AI to help drive those, those three things? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Exciting. All right. Well, neither stuff. of us have a pencil to start our list of our episode for 2025. We've got but... to prepare that. We, we get a, interestingly, that's one of our most adopted episodes or downloaded, I guess you could say, is that our, our prognostication on the next year. Uh-huh. So we'll have to pull, pull together some of that from all of our experts this year to help us out. So awesome. Christina, this has been outstanding. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining us. Thank and, you for uh, having yeah, me. This and, is great. And, and having and us thank, on this amazing bus. Thank you for joining right? us on the bus. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> if anyone cool. has the opportunity to check out the Forever Forward bus, uh, in your town or your event, I, I highly recommend it. And um, yeah, how how can we get in touch with you if 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 you'd like uh, you and Workday? How do we reach out if folks wanna wanna ask questions? Uh, well, uh, you could come to our to Workday dot com. Okay. And and find information there, and we can certainly point you to uh, yeah. to the right place from there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. It's been great. Have a great rest of the show, everybody. Yep. All right. <laughs>